What's up boys and girls, welcome to another video with me, Alex, the dude who likes personal finance and lives in one of the most remote places on earth. Greenland! Wow. So lately I've been seeing a lot of interest and growth in regards to me sharing about life in Greenland and other money related topics. As of last week we just hit 100 subscribers, 100 people watching on the tube looking at this guy. That was why I finally decided to get a haircut so I could look a little bit more presentable. But anyways, that is so awesome. Thank you for watching. But did I do anything different compared to years ago? Bear in mind that I've had this channel for roughly 10 years now, so it's rather old. I thought I would share how I managed this time to get more subscribers and more views and more comments compared to the previous videos that I put out on the internet. Well, sit back, relax, hit the like button, subscribe, Comment down below if you have any questions and let's get started. It all starts out in Australia 2015 where I spent one year as an exchange student. Definitely the best time during my university studies. That's for sure. My first video was uploaded 6th of September 2015 and it was basically me making a video to complement the blog I had made for fun and writing about my experiences while I was abroad. It was a weekly thing and never really got a whole lot of views. The video that got most views was called Cabramatta Moon Festival. I didn't even know what it was when I was attending. But the video got around 600 plus views. So fairly decent for a somewhat first time video. It was not up until when I posted a video that my brother made and shot with his drone while we were up visiting family in Sisimiut during a spring break that we had. It was him who did the filming and I just spent some time editing the video. It was not up until that video that I got any sort of significant amount of views on my channel. And it definitely is a pretty cool video. I'll link it up here and you can go have a watch. It's fairly short, right around two minutes. So have a look and tell me what you think about it. And also to this date, it is the most viewed video that I have of all my videos on my channel. And I definitely attribute it to a local Facebook tourist site that decided to share the video because they thought that it was pretty awesome and pretty well made and pretty well shot. That was basically the first video that went semi-viral, as you might say. It only has right around 4,000 views, so not that viral, but... On that video, I gained roughly right around 20 subscribers, but no significant amount of comments or anything else. Just a lot of views and then roughly around 20 subscribers. It has not been up until 2020 where I started sharing about personal finance and topics about Greenland where I saw any significant amounts of views or comments or subscribers. Basically because now I started adding tags and thinking about the titles that I'm gonna post and doing a little bit extra out of the thumbnails. So I have somewhat an idea of what I want the video to be found for on the YouTube search. And if you think about it, YouTube is owned by Google and Google and YouTube are now the most used search engines when you find things on the internet. And I will definitely attribute the amount of subscribers that I've gotten lately to the last five to six months that I have been somewhat steadily uploading videos on the internet. And my recent explosive growth, as some might say, is definitely coming from the video I uploaded called My First House in Nuuk, Greenland because it very much makes it pretty easy to search for either Nuke or Greenland, which is also where I get most of the search traffic that I have on my channel. And it also ranks fairly high when you search for Nuke, Greenland in the same sentence on YouTube. I should be on the first page. And since I got happy for surpassing 100 subscribers, then I thought I would like to share the five things that I think attributed to my growth. Of course, you never really know because of the almighty YouTube algorithm doing magic stuff. But these are my five things that I think has attributed to me going from 20 to now 113 subscribers, crossing 1000 subscribers soon. So please hit the like button, subscribe, comment. Thank you. The first one is definitely Greenland being a fairly underserved market, especially for people watching and wanting to see English videos and especially a person living in Greenland talking English about Greenland. I think it is a niche that's sort of underserved and I will probably do my best at exploiting 
that underserved market. The metadata also helps. So if you want a video to be able to be found on any sort of web related search engine, then you definitely have to add a good compelling title, add the tag, make sure that you are making the video so that it will be found for a certain keyword. The third one, the global pandemic going around right now. We don't really see that pandemic up here in Greenland as much because we're basically shut off from the rest of the world and have very stringent entrance rules. But there's a global pandemic going on at the moment and that means that people are sitting at home looking at their computer screens on the internet, on Netflix and YouTube and all the other entertainment stations that are available to the kids nowadays. So a lot of more people are on the internet searching for things. Number four, make compelling thumbnails. I mean, do it somewhat clickbaity, but also make it interesting for the viewer to want to watch your video. It is a little pain in the butt, but you gotta do what you gotta do. And the last one, engage with the audience, make people like the video, subscribe and comment. And it is definitely a lot more fun to be able to write with people and see what they have to say. So engage with people when they ask you questions, that also helps a lot. But anyways, it is definitely very encouraging to see people asking questions and commenting on the videos and actually speaking to some of the people in real life over WhatsApp. That's pretty awesome to be able to do that. Instead of just sending the video into one big empty void and never hearing anything and never getting any views on it. I know it's just numbers on a computer screen, but it helps a lot when you see that people actually watch your videos and they are actually interested about the things that you are talking about. In my case about Greenland and then somewhat about money. I try to mix those two because I would like to make more money in Greenland. So kind of doing it that way. And also I've had some comments where you guys actually ask me to do certain videos and I have not forgotten you. I will definitely get up to it. I have just had a lot of my plate at the moment as everybody else usually tells you. I just think that that is very cool when you can have sort of a community where people ask questions and you can talk back and forth and hopefully learn new things. I think that is what makes YouTube more fun compared to let's say Instagram because it would be very awesome to get a community talking about Greenland and personal finance related topics, debunking some myths and definitely learning from each other. So just comment and ask some more questions and I'll try to answer them. I also see Greenland with a lot of development potential and we're seeing a lot of interest at the moment from the US. They're just opening the embassy up here again and Denmark is increasing the spending towards the military, towards Arctic surveillance, which is both good and bad. And also Greenland in general, just opening more up to the outer world. And I definitely think the internet has somewhat of a saying in Greenland opening up towards the world. And for me, it's very awesome to be a part of this process of opening Greenland up towards more people. As I've said in another video, I really think that Greenland could have a potential to have let's say 300,000 people instead of the roughly 60,000 people we have here in total. But of course we got to have jobs for the people and houses for them to live in and food for them to eat. We still need the houses and we have some mines which might open up in the near future. I see the future fairly bright for Greenland and I think if the policies that are being put in place for companies and people from the outside world to get into Greenland, I think living in Greenland would be a lot more sought after. Of course it has its plus, it has its minuses. I'll link a video of how it is to live in Greenland up here. Definitely not for everybody, but I think we could have a lot more people in this country. So with that ramble, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and comment down below if you have any questions for me. I'll try to answer them with the best of my knowledge. And until next time, okay bye.